Let's talk a little bit about this CompTIA a certification. It's a certification you may not have heard of before. It's something in the industry. It's one of the most popular certification exams. And it's probably because it's, it's something that really is a foundational type of exam. This comes from an organization called the Computing Technology Industry Association. That's CompTIA. And this was created as a consortium of different companies. It used to be that if you wanted a certification in a manufacturer's computer, you had to go to Compaq and get a Compaq certification, get a Dell certification, get an IBM certification. You ended up taking multiple certification exams. And really, it was the same type of content in each one of those. It's a lot of repetition. And it really wasn't helping very many people to have to go through all those processes when what you really needed was a consolidated view. And that's how CompTIA came to be. This is a vendor neutral IT certification. It makes it very easy to take one certification exam. And now you know everything you should know about memory and disks and installing CPUs and understanding how the computer works. This uh, consortium is not just uh, companies that make computers, it's resellers, it's distributors, it's training centers. There's a lot of different people that are members of CompTIA. And all of these contribute to creating these exams and understanding what the requirements might be for people that take the certification. The idea is that there would be, in almost every country you might want to go to, a way that you could take a certification exam, many different languages available. Uh, the CompTIA A plus starts with English, but there are many different derivatives in any other countries, many other countries you can go to. So if you're wanting to take German or Spanish or Japanese or Chinese, there are different exams for you for those specific languages. IT technician position. This is a great way to prove that. It's a fantastic foundation. You really have to know a lot about a lot for the A-plus certification exam. And so it's a really good place to start generally for many different aspects of IT. No matter what you're doing in IT, there's parts of the A-plus exam they're going to apply to what you're doing. Many organizations require that you have a, a major industry certification to take a position with that organization, with that company. And so they say, you've got to have some type of certification. So people usually will start with A+, plus just so they can say, I have one of the most popular or the most popular IT certification exam that's out there for these entry level views. So how about that? Can you give me a job now? And that's a perfectly acceptable one in almost every situation. This really is also helps from a, a personal knowledge perspective. If you want to be able to say, I know everything there is to know and pass this exam and know all of this information that they've put in front of me, maybe take your, I, your A plus certification exam so you can prove to your existing employer, I'm ready to move up. I'm ready to do something different within our organization. And of course, everybody you see in IT had to start somewhere. And what better place to start than with an exam that really covers every little piece that you would need to know to be able to work with IT hardware, to work with software, and all of these other components that you would need to get going in the IT industry. The 2009 edition of the A-plus certification is a little bit different than previous versions. So let's talk a little bit about this. There are two exams. There is an essentials exam uh, that goes through a lot of different topics, hardware and troubleshooting, operating system and networking and security. It is, just like the name implies, the essentials of what you need to know and the fundamentals of what you would need to know in the IT industry. There are 100 questions on this exam, and you have to get a 675 as a passing score. Let me talk about this passing score for a moment. I've got down here at the bottom, the grading scale is from 100 to 900. When you get the exam, the lowest score you can get is a 100, the highest number is a 900, and every question is worth a different number of points. So you have to be able to get up to at least a 675 to pass. That's what that means for the essentials exam. The other exam that you must take to be able to be A plus certified is called practical application. This deals with hardware, operating systems, networking, and security. And for practical application, there are also 100 questions, but you have to do a little bit better. You have to do a 700 to pass that exam. Once you take both of those exams and pass them, you are then considered to be a plus certified. If you recall different versions of the A plus certification in the past, there were different options. You could take different types of exams. You needed still need to pass two, but you had a choice of four different exams to take. All of that is gone. Now it's an essentials exam. It's a practical application exam. You must take both of them and you must pass both of them to be A plus certified. 
If you already have an A-plus certification, you're A-plus certified for life. You don't have to take any other exam to maintain that A-plus certification. You don't have to maintain it. You don't have to have a certain number of credits every year. You're always A-plus certified. There are some employers that will say, I would like you to have the latest A-plus certification. And in those situations, there's something called the bridge exam. This is a BR0003. It's one exam. There's 85 questions on the exam, and you get 90 minutes, just like the other exams you saw. The passing score on this one is only 500. So as you recall from the other screen we were just looking at, to pass essentials, you needed 675. To pass practical application, it's 700. You, I want to say, only need a 500 to pass the bridge exam. Still 500. You still need to do pretty well. And the bridge exam itself is not some simple little exam that only has the differences between those two. It still goes through every single topic you would need to know to take the essentials and the practical applications exam. So this is not a cakewalk either. You still need to know everything that's on those requirements documents. It's like taking both exams and putting it all on one, and you have to pass that to be able to say that you're now 2009 certified or your latest 702 certified, 701 and 702 certified for the CompTIA examination. So if you haven't really gone back to this in a while, you're really going back to understanding what the requirements are, may want to look through this before you sit for the exam and make sure that you understand exactly what is going to be expected for you to know when you sit down and take that bridge exam, because they are going to throw some new information on there that wasn't on your old A+. This is a new exam with new requirements. Some of the requirements from the old exam aren't even on the new version anymore. So make sure you understand you're very comfortable before you go in and sit down for that exam exactly what they're going to be asking you.